oh man, this one's gonna ruffle some feathers. It seems no matter where I teach this information on earth, it always triggers the most people. But without fail, by the end of the class, the students always walk away more empowered. You ready? Here goes. Obedience is always immoral. The hero's journey is one of rebellion. No is the lost word of power. No. In fact, it's impossible to be a hero unless you disobey. So no more running. I am to misbehave. Now, even though we don't feel comfortable talking about it, we all recognize it. In fact, we give awards for it. Every single one of these people were honored as heroes because they disobeyed direct orders. This guy's disobedience probably saved the entire planet. He was a Russian who was manning a radar when his equipment malfunctioned and told him America had fired all their nukes. Now, if he would have followed standard operating procedures, he would have fired off all Russia's nukes, but he didn't. We're all here because he and others like him disobeyed. But what in the world does that have to do with story? Well, we've already learned that all story is based on the solar cycle. But what people don't know is that the sun's journey is one of rebellion. An example of this is the god most associated with the sun, Apollo. The name means not many, Apollo. Not many, but one. It is literally a name of rebellion. Now, Apollo is also the god of order and structure, but what people have forgotten, or worse, been lied to about, is that the order comes from rebellion. You can set your clock to it. It's completely predictable. It's always going to happen the same way and at the same time. In fact, disorder only happens when there isn't rebellion. It's when everyone is stuck in the ordinary world, disempowered and enslaved. It's the very reason the hero exists, to bring order, to reinstate natural law. And the cycle continues over and over and over. Speaking of Apollo, I actually wrote a short story which I later turned into a rap song that I use as a teaching tool, showing the journey of Apollo as he escapes the ordinary world. Now, I know nothing about music and even less about rap, but my kids get a kick out of it. Maybe you will too. If anything, you'll have a good laugh at my expense, and we could all use more laughter in our lives. You can find it in the link below. Back to story. What in the world could the hero possibly be rebelling from? Well, it could be anything. An evil empire, an overbearing parent, even a town that doesn't like dancing. But remember, the external journey, the locations, characters, the conflict, it's all a metaphor. Story's all about you. There is no external journey. So the hero rebels for the same reason you do, because we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. This is true in story because it's true in us. But since it would be boring to watch someone sitting in a chair and thinking for two hours, we invent an external journey as an outward manifestation of what is happening within the hero. And what's happening within the hero? Well, you see, at some point in the ordinary world, a character or an event is going to come along and the hero is going to discover that everything they know is wrong not just about their environment, but about themselves. In the hero's journey, this is known as the call to adventure, and it is immediately followed by the refusal of the call. And why? Well, because it's a normal human response. If some weirdo makes a video about rebellion and tells you that everything you know is wrong, the natural inclination is to reject that information. That's because we think we live in a world of facts and experts. And as long as you memorize the right facts and follow the right experts, everything's going to turn out okay. So the hero refuses the call and things get back to normal. But the seed's been planted. Something whispers in their ear, the things you can't question are always a lie. And that's when the journey of rebellion begins. The hero rebels against the fallacies of facts and experts of the left brain 
and turns within to discover the divine feminine. This change in thinking changes their environment, because as above, so below, as within, so without. Now, I know this is a hard pill to swallow, at least it was for me. I mean, only an idiot would question a fact, right? And there are some people who are just contrarians, and they get off on disagreeing with everyone and everything. But that's not what the hero does. They discover there's a difference between facts and truth. You see, facts are things you believe. Truth is something you know, and it can't be taught, only discovered. Neo, this is loco. They've got Morpheus in a military-controlled building, even if you somehow got inside. Those are agents holding him. Three of them. I want Morpheus back, too, but what you're talking about is suicide. I know that's what it looks like, but it's not. This is the difference between propaganda and story. Propaganda is full of facts, while story is full of truth. It's cold outside. It's warm outside. Both of these sentences are correct. It is a fact that it is winter. It is a fact that it is summer. Again, both correct. Doctors save lives. Obviously correct. Doctors are responsible for more deaths than guns. Also correct. Humans can't fly. Humans can fly. You can go on like this forever. That's because facts, including scientific facts, have very little to do with truth and everything to do with winning an argument, which is the us versus them mindset of the ordinary world and the very thing heroes must rebel from. Now, remember, this doesn't mean that those that control the ordinary world are evil. Most of the time, they're simply afraid, and what they fear most are the citizens of the ordinary world waking up and following the hero into sovereignty, because they'll become powerless so they set up an entire system to keep that from happening. This is the ordinary world. It's also important to understand that those in control of the ordinary world didn't get there because they were the strongest or the best at anything. They're there because they set the parameters of what the ideal good is, as well as the label of what is evil. No one who has ever passed a law in real life has ever had the authority to enforce that law. So what they do is convince citizens to enforce those laws for them. They do this by telling those citizens they are good if they obey, and evil if they don't. This is because people have the power, not any governing body. We see this historically as new religions come into existence. For example, here we have Pharaoh. Those that control Egypt do so by convincing people to obey Pharaoh, that to do so is good. Now, the arrows are blue because obedience and submission carry a feminine energy. That energy provides an environment for an idea and protects it, nurtures it, and makes it a reality. But then, because it's necessary, someone rebels and goes their own way. This is red because this is a masculine energy. The masculine penetrates into a new environment. It brings change. It's one of the reasons the sun is considered masculine. So the hero goes against the status quo. They have to. And if their ideas get enough traction, those who seek control build their new culture or society around the new ideal. Those that strive for that ideal are called good, and those that don't are called evil and are shunned. And the cycle continues. As what was once considered bad becomes good, dark becomes light, and what was once labeled as ignorance is now labeled as knowledge. Heroes don't rebel because of fear or hate. They rebel because of love. And sometimes, the only way to save an idea or institution you believe in is to rebel from it. I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. What hierarchies and systems of control do you believe in? More importantly, which ones do you need to rebel from? It's not going to be easy. You will be punished for it. You will feel alone. But as it's said in Lord of the Rings, to bear a ring of power is to be alone. Prophets are never welcome in their hometowns. But you'll be in good company. 
Christ himself was called demon-possessed. His own family called him insane. Buddhas did the same. That's why in story, the mentor lives alone on the outskirts of society. They're a rebel and the first hero whose ideas haven't yet been accepted as truth. But that's a lesson for another time. To be a hero is to misbehave. This is true in story because it's true in you. There's only one story. There's only one person in that story. And that person is you. Impending news, everyone! My new book is finally available. Now, it's being sold as a children's book, but I actually wrote it for my adult film students and anyone taking a writing program for the first time to show how simple the hero's journey is. And it's all there. The ordinary world, the call to adventure, the refusal, the ego death, and the ascension into our true selves. It not only makes a great bedtime story for kids, but there's a lot of adult esoteric truth hidden within as well. Give it a look and see what you think. It can be purchased at Amazon. And remember, there's only one story. There's only one person in that story. And that person is you. <laughs>